To tell the story about Abrams Law, we have to actually go all the way back to 1965 to talk about Moore's Law. Moore's Law is due to a observation that Gordon Moore made that has to do with computers. Computer chips are getting more and more sophisticated at a rapidly accelerating pace, that the number of transistors would double every year and a half. Uh, the original paper, that, which Moore's Law got its name, uh, made a prediction for 10 years that the most complex integrated circuits would go from about 60 components to something like 60,000, a thousand-fold increase in complexity. That was a wild extrapolation of very little data. I was just trying to get across the idea that integrated circuits were going to be the route to cheap electronics. It got the name Moore's Law, which has stuck to everything that changes exponentially ever since. This basically means that the power and speed of the computer would double every year and a half. Well, doubling has the ability to make the impossible doable and the doable essentially cheap and free. Moore's Law tells us that computers will double in power and this doubling is really what's allowed what used to be possible only a supercomputer 10 years ago. Now actually you can do it in your pocket on your phone. Uh, so where does this connect with biology? Moore's Law is not just limited to computers. There are biological examples of things like Moore's Law. And the most notable one is in genomics. 20 years ago, the Human Genome Project sequenced a single human genome at a cost of $3 billion. 10 years ago, the same thing would cost $3 million. So it's a huge advance, but still expensive. Now, maybe a $3,000 approaching $300 relatively soon. And so $3 billion for a medical procedure, that's a bit expensive. $3 million still out of reach. $300, $3,000, now we're talking about something that's really practical. So where does E-Rooms Law come into this? Well, actually, it turns out that not everything in biology and healthcare works on Moore's Law. Actually, a lot of things are the reverse of Moore's Law. And that's where E-Room, well, Moore's Law backwards comes into effect. The cost of drugs, the cost of healthcare itself is growing exponentially. So the cost decreasing over time, uh, getting halved along the way, it's doubling over time. Because the cost of healthcare right now already is a quarter of the spend of the United States. If that continues to double and double and double over time, this is the healthcare disaster that we're all dealing with. So the question comes then, we've got these two laws, we've got Moore's Law and Ebram's Law. Where do these things connect with each other? Well, you can imagine if you've got one thing that's exponentially going down in cost, another that's exponentially going up in cost. It's interesting to think, what can you transfer one, from one curve to the other? If computation could play a role, even if it's expensive now, it's something where, in time, the healthcare equivalent will get more and more expensive, and the computational equivalent will get more and more inexpensive to the point where they meet. And that meeting point is the key question. And it, what we're seeing already is that in several different areas in healthcare, they've already met or computation has exceeded, and we're seeing things taken from the Ewan's Law world into the Moore's Law world. A, a natural area is in applying machine learning to healthcare. We've seen examples in radiology, dermatology, ophthalmology, where images are key. And with computers being so good at image recognition, areas of Ebram's Law are now having the potential be taken over to the computational Moore's Law side. We're also seeing this in the area of diagnostics, where machine learning can understand the readouts of complicated genomics in a way that no human being could. And this is just the beginning. With the natural fate of each of these laws very clear, there will be more and more things that can hop from one curve to the other.